Blog, and uh, didn't want to make you guys have to wait any longer than we already have. So it is Redness Day, and it's Mob Vlog. Welcome back. Hey, Red, how's it going? Rough, but it's going. <laughs> I know this. Is, uh, I've graduated into a laptop, so <laughs> I'm not used to this. <laughs> hey, well, you got things all set up and started. The main thing is, is we're on, we're here, and you guys are here, and it's good to see you guys today. I uh, just want a couple of quick hellos out there. Sean Pender, uh, Southside, Do, uh, Do Dode Fan 78 uh anthony Mar D. martini you guys are all here 1k gold good to see you jim magnifici uh david grimpy evil rev john oh you guys are all here dazzling urbanites in the house we have bsj what's happening scott h good to see you dead uh keith helton uh all you guys old barn shop the whole, everybody the whole crew's here huh james marvin joe clark John Ramsey, uh, it's good to see all of you. you guys. Are all just piling up in the in this Sunny Mike Zero, Bruce Henry. City? <laughs> oh. Sunny Zaro, uh, Ray Frey. I don't see Barnyard. I'm looking for Barnyard. I got a story about Barnyard. Oh, Brown's here. Hi. Uh, Hi. Modesto towards Paul Brown. Fresno in the house. All right. Hey, so it's good to see everybody. Uh, it is good to uh, uh, Joseph the Fourth. Scherzinga? I don't know. I'm just taking a guess. What was that? That's me. Ah. That's my phone. Okay. I'm, I'm making sure I'm not hearing him. So I'm gonna, I just hear something crazy in the... Cheryl Mann, Ron Frey, Scott Mattaggart, American Gangster, Mike Martinez, Oregon in the house. All right. Oregon is the house. Strolling 86. What's happening, guys? Hey, it is awesome to be here today because uh, I'm going to tell you what. We're going to be talking about... Um, we're going to be talking about what you guys want to talk about, Chicago outfit history, which is what we always talk about on Mob Vlog every Redness Day. And it uh, it is it is good to see all of you. Arizona, Philip uh, is in the house from Arizona. It's good to all of you guys. North Carolina, Bobby Joe. Good to see you, Bobby Joe. Okay, so uh, that's what we're going to do today. Cal City's in the house. p Dog, no way. All the way from Calumet City. Wow, from back home. Back home years ago. Excuse me a second, folks. I have to ask Adam a question. Adam, how did you make me increase the size of the uh, comments on the side? Oh, yeah, sure. You want me to tell you that little uh, that little trick, right? So, I forgot. It was on the other computer. Okay. All right. You ready? So yeah. you're going to hold down the control button, okay? Yeah. And, you keep, and then you're going to you, – your your mouse, your little roller. Do you have a roller in the middle? Yes. Roll it forward and hold the control down and, and put your cursor on the screen. Does it do it? Oh, Make yeah. It bigger? So yeah. now all your comments are easier to read. They're larger. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm having to start to increase the size of mine. If you guys are on a computer and you want to increase your uh, screen size quickly, you can just hold down the control button, just scroll forward with your mouse on that little. Now I can at least read them. <laughs> not, not, yeah. Now you can sit back and you can see everything. South Florida, Gregory Hart, Elmwood, Elmwood Park, Gabby Rodriguez, Carl Foster. What's happening? Um, wow. Grabowski. And uh, yeah, it's good to see all you guys. Didn't like it. Great. Uh, <laughs> quick, announce <laughs> quick, quick announcement. I want to thank all of you. But the other day, Mob Vlog hit 30,000 prescribers. Never thought that would, I never thought that would happen. I'm serious. I mean, I'm really serious. That's, I, I a lot of people said um, last August when Frank passed that, that they were like, just give it up, just leave, bad, bad, don't forget. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, the last number I said to Frank was 21,000. So I remember you telling me that. It's gone. Yeah, 9,000 prescribers it's gone in the last uh, in the last year, which is 
Never thought that would happen. So you never know till you try, right? You never know. So thank you, Cheryl Mann. And uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Cindy. And it's good. Thank you very much. Yeah, Frank's, Frank's smiling down. Thank you, Jim Magnifici. It's very kind of you. Um, yeah, 30,000. And uh, the other day, the other day, had the uh, first had the first video go viral on here. It was a short video, but it got a half a million views, which is, again, something never thought that would happen. Our highest video up to that point had 200,000, I think. So it's... Um, it's because of you guys. So thanks a lot. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's keeping, uh, it's keeping, it's keeping us documenting things and it's keeping, uh, it's keeping, it's keeping Frank's memory alive. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the quick announcement. So let's jump right into this. We, um, uh, red, red. Yes. Robert, Robert. Bialk. Bielk, Robert Bielk. Red, do you know <clears throat> Hal Smith, the bookmaker that was killed in the late 80s in Long No, Road? I didn't know him. I heard when it happened, but I didn't know him. Knew of the incident, but never. Yep. Uh, right. um, which video got 500 views? That's hilarious. I'm going to tell you which one got 500 views. Frank told a story about being on the set of casino you guys may have remembered this because the videos the, the the content's been sitting online i mean it's been on youtube it's just that i took the little chunk out of that content and put it up with its own thumbnail and the thumbnail uh, I'll, sh I'll just i'll show it to you because it's actually I, I thought it was quite clever and and, and that's really part of getting a, a video to go viral is having a, a thumbnail that looks interesting that people look at and go Ooh, that looks interesting, and I'm gonna watch it. So, has to be something, has to be something cool like that. So here it is. This is the. Um, I'm gonna share it on the on the screen for you guys to see. Here, boom, it is, and it's titled "What I Warned Joe Pesci Never Again to Do." <laughs> and where is it? Anyhow, here's what it looks what like. What his bodyguards walked away. <laughs> Anyways, Fra Fra yeah, Fra I guess I guess he called Frank on the set. His wife was there, Pesci's wife, and uh, and he didn't introduce Pesci's wife. So he, he, he what he, Pesci didn't introduce Frank when he introduced everyone. And Frank said, "Hey, how come you didn't introduce me to your wife?" And Pesci said, "Well, what was I going to do? I say this is Frank the Rat." Like, yeah. So Frank said after the shoot, he said he pulled him off to the side. He didn't he didn't holler at him in front of people. He pulled him off to the side and he said, He said, Don't you forget that I'm the real thing and what you're what I play. And and if you ever say something like that, I'll rip a freaking eyeball out of your head. <laughs> it's kind of anyway. Uh video people seem to like the story, I guess. So that's the video that went uh that uh, that took off there, and uh, and I get I gotta say thank you to uh, Disorderly Product News because it was um, DPN who called me up and said you know what you should do and just think about you know maybe take a little chunk of something and he it was his idea of that story and um, yeah kind of took off so that's that's neat. Um, all right, James Marvin, let's ask so we get to some more questions. Today's topic, by the way, is simply Chicago crime history. So you guys can take this wherever you want uh, today. And uh, Adam, you know Rick Rosallo that owned Crazy Horse 2 in Vegas? Allegedly a made outfit guy. Spilatra had ownership interest that was taken over by Joe Lombardo's brother minutes after Tony was hit. Wow, very interesting. Rocky. Yeah, that's what I, I, I believe. Yeah, um, I have heard that. And I, I the Crazy Horse 2 in Vegas was also shortly after I got here, maybe in 07 or 08 is when it was raided and shut down uh, for the final time. So, yeah. 
A lot of that, though, I mean, in those, you know, Mets, those are cash businesses. You can get a lot of that kind of stuff. Gary Mushinsky, Red, any chance the tapes you made of Frank Schweiss were turned over to his lawyers during discovery and are now in the possession of his heirs? I don't know about his heirs, but they were turned over to his attorneys, which is Alan Ackerman. Okay. Don't know what what would have happened to him, though. No. Huh? Okay. I don't think he turned it over to the family, though. Um, right. So That's Ted, on my part. <laughs> so Ted N. Uh, Frank was a great guy for not going off on Pesci in front of everyone, and a lot of people commented that and he said, uh, "Right, said that in the comments that you know he had you know still like uh respected him, but you know still went and get it." Carl Foster, go get your shine box, Pesci. <laughs> uh, these actors tend to tend for that stuff. Exactly. So, so in essence, Keith Helton said, Joe Pe Frank told Joe Pesci, don't be a jag off. That's exactly right. That's what happened. <laughs> um, the shovel, I have not heard anything about that, the shovel. I read that Al Capone's Florida property is going to be demolished. Yes. You heard about that, huh? Yes. Wow, that's news. I think they paid $12 million for it or something like that. And they're going to demolish it. I'm not going to build them, build something. It's like, uh, it's like Vegas there in Florida now or what? I don't know. Let's blow it up and build something new. Uh, Imran Patel, who put the bomb in Lefty's Cadillac? So Imran, the car bombing that was done here in Tony Roma's parking lot on Sahara Avenue here in Las Vegas was supposedly Kansas City. And Kansas City ordered the car bombing, Nick Sevilla did, because Lefty was an informant. Lefty was a federal informant. And uh, it's one of the reasons that he never... They never that came never, out the trial. Did it in Family Secrets it came out? No, it came out in uh, Kansas City in the wow. skip trial. In the skip trial. Discovery. Oh, it did. That's why what? he never he never testified in that trial. Nothing. No. None of it. Yeah. Jeez. Um, so, all right. So that, anyways, I hope that answers your question, Imran. Uh, so, Adam, you may know this. Did Capone's underlings have the houses across the street from the golf course in Burnham? Yes, that is that is correct. On Burnham Avenue, as you cross the Burnham Bridge into Burnham, the golf course is on the east side of the street. And on the west side, there's a group of houses. There's about two blocks long that you go down. And some of those houses, uh, yes, were, were had... It, it was either guys that worked for Al Capone. Al Capone somehow was connected to those homes. I do know that, though. Yes. I was uh, was well-known growing up in that area. Um, so thanks for the question, P-Dog. Bobby Joe, did the book Double Cross say Sam G. and Connor was part of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? I didn't read it. You didn't read Double Cross? No. Okay, I have, I have not either, so I... I don't know, Bobby Joe. Maybe somebody else can answer it in the uh, in the comments. So, if you know, anyway, Morris Shanker, Ted N. Red, did Morris Shanker pay up the loan? Uh, sorry, did Morris Shanker pay up the loan to the outfit, or was that the reason he got killed? That's the reason he got killed. Who was with Joey Lombardo behind the hit? I don't know. No clue. No, I have no clue. Okay. Um, Tony Padula. Tony Padula, what happened to all these guys' money, for example? The <laughs> clown, when he uh, was on the run and had 6000 on him uh, when he was caught in Elmwood Park. All of his money. He got a divorce from Marion. She filed for divorce, and he just gave everything to Marion, mm -hmm. his wife. And so that when he when he went, he knew it was going to be they were going to train him if they convicted him, and there was a likelihood that they would. But uh, what happened was that was months before. But uh, what happened was, uh, <laughs> she owned everything, and he got public defenders. Mm -hmm. 
the government paid for him. Okay. So he didn't have to pay for attorneys. Got it. Uh, J.W. Al Capone's Chicago home is in the ghetto now, I believe. Uh, yeah, 3900 Prairie Avenue it is. Yeah, it's in the ghetto. When we went back and visited Chicago in uh, October, uh, 2020 October, we were there, and uh, Joe, Frank's brother, was giving me the tour, giving us the tour, I should say. Uh, Art, Art Kelly was uh, with me as well, and uh, Lewis was with as well, going around to all these. And it was... Um, it was Joe who suggested that we don't go to Al Capone's house. <laughs> and, and being from Calumet City, I, he didn't need to say any more to me. He it's was a like, rough neighborhood. It, and it was the second day, I think, in the evening. And it was like, well, we got to go there. We got to go there. And, and it was getting dark. And it was like, yeah, probably not a great idea, you know. So, no, um, it is in the ghetto, JW, yes. So, uh, it is. Uh, Don Chichio de Porzalo. What? doesn't make sense to me all these joints on the arm street tax tens and hundreds of millions of dollars collected where is is the money these guys That's, almost always die broke how good question most of them spend it most of them are gamblers most of them spend it i mean most of them are gamblers uh people like Ricardo, they weren't gamblers you know but the other guys down the way they gambled Hmm. I, I don't guys like Frank, Frank Collada. Mm -hmm. What did he do with his money? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Some people would say, well, Spy Tech, what did he do with his money? A lot of these guys, I don't know what they do with their money. And they had money. Seems like it, huh? A lot of money. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, um, hey, Red. Michelle Joan wants to know that she found a short video tube called What Happened to Ch the Chicago Mob? It's a CBS Chicago. Yes. In that video, there's a clip of a surveillance video. Looks like the exact room that's in Red Wilmette's tapes. Yes, it is. Michelle Joan, there you go. And it answers your question. Uh, Sam Giancana was a bartender at Myron and Phil's. They were always paying for protection, too. That's way before my time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, somebody's looking for some. Uh, somebody is looking for some suggestions. Is it to Scott H? I think it's Scott H. This happened. Um Let's see. Asking, oh, go, you're going to Chicago. Wants to know some good restaurants and good pizza joints. So, look, Scott H., I know, is, he's an awesome guy. Uh, he's come out here and done the tour in Vegas. Uh, and if you guys can give him some suggestions in the comments, because he's reading them, please do, because uh, there's a ton of great places. But uh, depending on where you're staying uh, in Chicago, depends on um, where you can, you know, you're you're gonna be so there's get some suggestions and throw them up there in the comments for our our, our pal Scott H. Uh, did Jack Machine Gun Gurn carry a weapon? Pablo, 2012. I have no idea. Hmm. Uh, I would assume he did. Okay. A lot of those guys back in those days were carrying 45s. I heard somewhere Harry Aylman was present for Action Jack Sh Jackson's torture murder, along with Mad Sam and Tony Spilatro. I don't think so. Okay. Hope that answers your question there, Scott H. Um, let me scroll down to some. Oh, Ru Russell's. Russell's barbecue beef. David Grimpy. Scott H., if you go there, we went to Russell's. Joe Collada took, took us there. It is awesome. It's really, really, really good. I'm just reading some of the comments. Aurelio's Pizza. I can't, man, you guys are going to make me hungry. Um, 
It's going to make me hungry. That's what's going to happen. Uh, okay, so Robert, Robert, my dad was a bookie, and he had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on re legal representation. Dean the Dream made a lot of money pre-Grey Lord. Dean Wilson. <laughs> Who's Dean Wilson? He was I a guess famous lawyer. Dean the Dream. Yeah. Better call Saul. <laughs> he, he really did a good job. I mean, he got a lot of people off. Ride the wind. I heard a lot of mobsters don't actually carry guns unless there's a specific reason because most are already felons and aren't legally permitted to. Uh, that depends on the era. In the 70s, uh, Joey Lombardi used to say nobody carries a, a piece in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, you only take it out unless, if you're doing work, heavy work. You don't you don't just carry it around the neighborhood. Right. You get pinched for that and you know, it's gonna be whatever. U to W. I'm guessing D, uh, Dean the Dream never lost the case. He was very good. He started out as a matter of fact, Joe Lopez, I believe he worked for him as a uh, he was in drugs. He did drug cocaine things and then gradually he just did mob cases. But Dean Wilson was very well known. Very well known. His wife worked with him too. Joanna huh. Wilson. Um, this is interesting, P Dog. Uh, back in the day, do you know if Dillinger had any dealings with Capone? I don't know. Okay. I'm I, because you brought up Dillinger, though, I'm going to tell you guys a story that uh it never made it into any of Frank's books. Not in any one of the three books did the story make it in. But, you know, um, he, he gave me a, 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 a copy of his original, um, original book, which was condensed down to make Collada the first one. But in this book, in the, in, there's a story in there. When he was a kid, his father, you guys know that Frank's father was a, uh, a driver, and uh, that's how he, it's how his dad died. Was he got in a car accident, being in a police chase, and anyway, his dad. Um, there were police that came to the house and sat and waited, and this and all kinds of things happened. But one of the stories, his father robbed John Dillinger. Wow, Frank's dad robbed John Dillinger. Yeah, it's a yeah interesting story. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, Ted N, is there a case of any guys beefing or trouble starting over women besides the Milwaukee Phil hit? A few, a few, but they were told, and that was it. They weren't killed. Phil just, you know, he made arrangements for that. Uh, the the ones I knew about that were complaints, uh, they were just told, you know, back off. Mm -hmm. Or you have the case like Marshall Cofano's wife, Darlene. She was uh, sleeping with Sam Giancana, and there was no real beef over it. You know, it was known, and Marshall didn't make a beef over it. Huh. Those well, it was all I, I really know about, you know. T Tony, Tony Spilatro was sleeping with uh, Jerry McGee, who left yeah. his wife. Yeah. But you know, that was a no-no, too. He just, everything blew up all at once in his face. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, sorry, let me, Calzone 83. Joey Aupa used to sell weapons to Dillinger's gang back in the 30s. There you go. Never heard that before. Uh, Red, do you remember Little Lewis from Elmwood Park? No. I didn't know any of the guys from Elmwood Park. Huh. Alaric Garth Goth. Anyone attend Michael Francis's Bible study? The Michael Francis Bible study. Milk and cookies were served along with subpoenas. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I, have, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, Jason Kling Klingner. I know you how y'all. I like how y'all managed not to get mixed up in all the mob genre 
BS going on in all the other channels. Great show as usual, Adam. Hey, thanks a lot, Jason. I appreciate that. You know, we try and keep this thing just, it's Chicago, it's Chicago history, it's Chicago outfit history, and we have got to have the coolest group of, <laughs> you guys are the coolest group. The audience is great, and not only that, Adam tries to keep it on point, no fiction, just facts. That's it. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you guys a quick story that happened. The other night I was sitting with a friend of mine who just got back in town, and we're, we're sitting having cigars. Red was on the phone, okay? I was talking to Red for a couple of minutes, and I hung up the phone, and this very tall, this very tall person stands up across the way, looking right at me, and her name happens to be Misty, so I'm talking about you, Misty, if you, I know you're watching, um, looks over and starts walking towards me, gets up to me, and she says to me, you're the mob vlog guy. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me, right? Like, it all right? I mean, come on. We're just sitting there having cigars as a random stranger. She tells me her life story. Born in Blue Island, same place I was born, okay, same hospital that I was born in. And goes on to tell me that um, when he was young, uh, got into the Marines, all right? And then after the Marines, got married, and then had kids, and then got into the Hell's Angel Biker Club, and did all these things, and was very angry, mad person, and is now Misty. And <laughs> is happy and much more herself, and calm and collected, and I'm happy for you, Misty. Um, but... To just, I mean, what I'm, the point I'm getting at, Red, is she told me all about how she listens to every one of these shows and lays there and reminisces about all these things and places and whatnot that we talk about and that you guys bring up and talk about. And uh, it's, yeah, it's just, it's, and I never in a million years imagined that how diverse that this audience would be. Because really, I thought it was a bunch of guys sitting around listening to this thing that, um, you know, from Chicago. Which, well, there's a lot of new names that have come in I'm, here. Well, we're seeing a lot of new names popping up here, which is really cool. But, uh, I mean, really cool. Hey, thank you, Ron. I'm, I apologize. The uh, I had a Sharpie in my hand. and I'm really sorry about that. I didn't know I was making noise that much. The microphone picks it up a lot. Rusty Shackleford. Uh, what's up, fellas? I'm late. My bad. LOL. Good. Uh, That's did okay, you, Rusty, you made it. <laughs> did you play Misty, Adam? Pablo, play Misty. Play Misty. <laughs> play Misty for me. God. Uh, Hit that like button, folks. Yeah, Help hey, guys, forgot to tell you that. Hit the like button while you're watching on Facebook, you're watching it on YouTube, whatever. Um, please hit the uh, hit the like button. New haircut, Adam, nice. Nah, just combed it a different way today. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I don't Scott. know. What the hell. How you doing, what? Scott? <laughs> uh, Ron, now I'm going to tell you something else. I had a phone call with somebody, called me up, and was in prison with John Gotti. He was in prison with John Gotti. And when you're in prison, they write your name on the tags and they sew them in your, I don't, I mean, this is what I've been told. I've never been in prison. So I'm not speaking from, um, from uh, experience. I'm just saying this is what I've been told. So they write your name on a tag and they sew it into your pants. Anyways, he has a couple of John Gotti pants tags and uh, was like, I wonder if the museum would be interested in, you know, or having. And then another person called after showing those Frank Schweiss tapes, sent me pictures of what is it, 16 millimeter, you said? Yes. 16? 16. Six, 16. One, 16. Yeah, 16 millimeter film. Uh, that had a Turk, uh, Turk Turello. Yeah. Turk Turello. Yeah. It's a Turk Turello home movies that he has that he needs to get transferred, you know, digi digitized. But anyway, it's a really cool. Uh, it's just a really cool crowd that you guys, that, 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 that you guys have, <laughs> you guys have, uh, become. So Tim, what's up from Devil's Lake, North Dakota, man. Royal Jenner. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Roy's been my, he's my pal since I was like, I don't know, 14. I've known Roy for like more than half my life. 
Since high school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was a kid in high school. Yeah, I was doing my magic shows and the high school talent show, and he helped me. Was, yeah, great, great guy. Um, Lewis Cole. Hi, Adam. Did Red Ferriola have more power as a boss than Joey Ayupa or uh, and DeFranzo? And I'm sorry I didn't get to your question sooner, Lewis. I saw you posted a few times. I've just been on a ramble. So, Actually, uh, he didn't have more or less. He just took over the position. And he demanded more money. <laughs> hmm. Tommy. Hey, Tommy, thank you very much. That's really nice of you, buddy. Uh, Red, did you have any association with John Wayne Gacy from Norwood Township? No. No? Nothing at all with John Wayne? No, I did. I saw it on TV, and uh, I was just as flabbergasted as most people. Do you remember Nissan Pharmacy, where he abducted the last victim? No. That was in Des Plaines, I believe. Oh, we went to John Wayne Gacy's house when we were in Chicago. I say we again. Art Kelly and I went there and uh, and, and took a look at it while we were driving along. So, David Grimpy. Uh, possibly, yes. Uh, uh, William Marshall. Hey, fellas, what's happening? What's going on? Uh, okay, Philip. Arnieri, Arnieri, Philip Arnieri, yeah. Uh, okay, new to the channel, maybe. Red, did you party with Tony Spilatro? Quite a bit, okay. quite a bit at my home. And Tony drank scotch, hmm? Good scotch. Uh, he was really quite a guy. He really was. And he was a totally different person by me. I did not know that Tony killed all these people until years later. I mean, he was dead and gone. I did not know about these things. Never knew about them. Yeah. I knew him as a person, not as a – we never discussed uh, business at all in any way whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> Frodo Jack – Hey, guys, join late. I don't know if you guys talked about it, but the Al Capone, the Al Capone reel for sale by the Capone fam shows Capone swimming with Lucky Luciano. Oh, a reel, a, a reel shows, shows Capone swimming with Lucky Luciano. No, didn't talk about it. We just talked about Al Capone's uh, estate, his last estate in Florida being uh, demolished. I guess they're going to build something new there. But no, didn't know about that reel. That's pretty interesting. Uh, George, Red story and artifacts that he may have should be part of the Mob Museum too, don't you think? Um, I don't know what things that Red has. But his story, yeah. I mean, well, you know, <laughs> besides the, the, the tapes. Yeah, no, no, they don't get those. They never get those. <laughs> no. Any guys buried, mob guys buried in the foundations of the mob museum? Carl Foster. Probably not. But I'll tell you, that building, that mob museum was built, um, it was the original post office here in town in Las Vegas. And it's, it's an historic building. Um, so, yep. Anyways. Possibly, who knows? We weren't around then. 1933. Yeah. It's a 1933 it was built. So out here in Vegas. I had to look that up. But yeah. In those days, they took them out of the desert. <laughs> 86 of them. Eight, eight miles out, six feet down. That's what happens. Uh, nothing better than Maker's Mark. Oh, nothing better than Maker's Mark in one of these Frank cups. Yeah, there Frank, some Maker's Mark in it. Sure. Did um, did Tony ever put cocaine in his scotch? I'm sorry, uh, Coke in his scotch. Did he ever put Coke no. in his scotch? I'm no. guessing you meaning Coke, like Coke, the product, not cocaine. So why would you put no, cocaine? No, we drink it straight. Okay. But okay. Water bags. Water bags. 
Cheryl Mann wants to know what you think of Pesci's portrayal of Tony since you knew him. Well, I thought it was a little bit vicious on Pesci's part because I never saw that side of him. Uh, I never saw him act so violent or really scream at people like he did in the movie. Mm -hmm. But that's my interpretation of what I saw. I don't know what Frank saw, if he saw him scream at people or, you know, go off the deep end. I never saw him go off the deep end. Mm -hmm. And as she played that part as a violent, crazy, stabbing a guy with, in the neck with a pen, uh, I don't know, uh, telling the banker, when he told the banker, uh, this is what I do. I'm going to bust your head tomorrow morning. And right. by the time you're coming out of coma, he said, I'll just be getting out of jail and I'll come back and bust it again because that's what I like to do. I never heard him talk like that, ever. <clears throat> by the way, if you go watch that scene in the movie Casino where he's sitting there saying that, you put my money to sleep, I'm going to put your brain to sleep. Look when he says that at De Niro standing there at the bar. He's like standing there shaking his head. <laughs> Look at that frame, all right, where he's standing there shaking his head on the bar sitting next to him. This is an Easter egg. Check this out. On the bar sitting next to him is a picture frame. And in that picture frame is a picture of Tony Spilatro and Frank Rosenthal in the movie Casino. 26 years it took me to find that. <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody find it and point it out to you later? Uh, no, I don't remember how that happened. If I read it and I went, I must have, maybe I read it years ago and knew and forgot and then refound it. It's like, you know, because now I'm getting a little older and who knows. So maybe I'm having a, ooh, this is brand new to me. Yet it was brand new to me before already. I have no idea. I remember as a kid, they say, I learned more. I've, I've forgotten more than I've learned. Right. So, yeah. Okay, Keith Helton, who was sent to replace Tony Spilatro in Vegas after he was killed? Nobody. That was it. That was the end of it, Keith. That was the end of it. That's why he was going back to Chicago. That's it. There was no, no replacement. 1984, he's gone, and that was it. I mean, the Stardust... The Fremont, the Hacienda, the Marina, the the whole deal. Everything was over. It was done. So that's that's what happened. Nobody nobody replaced. Uh, Lewis Cole was Larry Newman from Chicago or the outskirts, as he was from a really rich family, I believe. Uh, Lewis, true from the, suburbs. From, from the suburbs. Was he from? Would you know? Well, Frank talked about him. Frank talked about him. This is. When Frank talked about him, he lived in one of the suburbs. I don't recall where he said he was from, but he I said do. one of the suburbs because Frank really wasn't in Chicago either. He was in Schiller Park or he was in one of the other suburbs out there. Well, Frank met him in Statesville Penitentiary in Joliet. He was doing 100 years for a triple homicide. And he got his crew of uh, attorneys together. I say a crew attorneys, a team that they they got his sentence reduced like four years. And the reason he was able to do that was he had a trust fund, which is he was from a rich family and a lot of uh, money in the background. And that's because uh, his father left him a trust fund, paying him like hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Which is like that's in the seventies. That they'd be like getting a couple hundred thousand a year now. I mean, it's just it's a lot of money. So that's what he did. And uh, yeah. Hey, Adam and Red, can you recommend a good scotch to sip on the rocks? I don't particularly. Yeah. yeah. If you don't want, like I like Royal Salute, but if you don't like that, try Doers. Oh, Doers. Doers like label. There you go. Try that on the rocks, Ron Ochoa. I don't, uh, I don't drink anymore. <laughs> I don't drink any less either, but it's all. <laughs> Ted N. Red, how did you first meet Marshall Caifano? Do you know about a hit on the woman in Chicago who was tortured and set on fire, which he was the suspect? I met Marshall Caifano uh, through Joey Lombardo, and I met him right after he got out of prison. I think it was 1974. And uh, I didn't know about the woman that that was earlier, many, many years earlier. I didn't learn about that until I started 
reading about him. But uh, like everybody else that I was involved with, he was a real easygoing guy to me. And I never saw him do anything violent, any, anything violent. Mm. And he didn't have a violent attitude. He was aggressive, but not around me. I'd heard about it with Kurt Hansen. I mean, Kurt had a fit when he went down to talk to him, told him to get lost. I guess he told him he was going to put him in the ground or something like that. But uh, I never actually heard him do anything. Matter huh. of fact, all those made guys, none of them ever, I, I just didn't have follow, bad feelings with them for some reason. Um, <clears throat> so we've been talking a bit about uh, about this uh, Al Capone keeps coming up. JW, Al Capone's estate has a lot of stuff up for auction. It's online. So here's what we're going to do. If you're watching with the screen, you guys can go ahead and take a look. I'm going to put it up here. Hey, Brent, how you doing, buddy? Duke of Dunhurst. In. Hey, the Duke of Dunhurst is in the house. Okay, so uh, Al Capone's things are for sale, and one of them is his 45 pistol. And they're saying that it's going to fetch about uh, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, is what they're expecting. It's going to fetch. Did you hear me use that word? Fetch. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of things that are on the. Uh, it's going to be for sale. I guess they're only allowing two hundred people or something to come in an auction uh, to come in and be part of it. So I don't, I don't know why that would be. So. Uh, ride the wind. Try Chivas in a little uh, water. No ice. No ice. Chivas is good. It's a 12-year scotch. It's 12, huh? Um, Scott H., when I spoke to Frank, he said he hated Larry Newman and was wary of him when they were together. No trust. <laughs> he also he said he, was, he wasn't all there. <laughs> He was a psychopathic killer, he said, if I'm not mistaken. Chevis or McCallan? Tried to find Royal Salute when Red came out here. Couldn't find any. Got a, uh, what, what did it pick you up? The 21-year-old? Glenn Levitt. Glenn Levitt, yeah. No, it was Glenn Fetich. Well, Glenn Fetich. Glenn yeah, okay. I get those two mixed up. I'm telling you, I get those two mixed up. Um, Chain Weaver is better late. It was, late. Good, it was good, man. Very good scotch. I live in Scotland. Pablo, you're from Scotland. I live in Scotland, home of whiskeys, but I prefer wild turkey. What are you going to do? just made here. That is, right? He yeah. lives in the land of whiskeys, and, and he's drinking our stuff. That's hilarious. <laughs> good to see you. Um, James Marvin, which boss loved Lefty so much? In the book, he won't say the name, but says a Chicago boss referred to Lefty as his son. That was uh, Joe Ayupa. Ayupa? Yeah. Tight with Lefty. Yeah. Very, very tight with him. I know Ayupa I like... He played Tony. Primo in the movie. In, mm -hmm. in the beginning of the movie... And he was bringing in bets and stuff like that and paying off to him. And he said, how do you get those scores? How do you do this? How do you do that? And he said, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't give away the family secrets. Right. Uh, Gary Mushinsky, I have no idea why this would be replaying from the beginning. It's not over yet. We're still live, at least right now. It's 2.53 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Don and Donald Angelini or Dom Cortina? Any interactions with them? Uh, Angelini uh, was with Joey Lombardo, and uh, I met him. I saw him. Uh, we talked when 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 Joey was there, but uh, no real interaction. Just hi, how are you? You know, easy going stuff. What's what's Mezcal? Mezcal rules in the Bay Area. Mezcal. Mezcal. Oh, Mezcal. It's, it's cactus whiskey. It's uh, from Guerrero. Uh, and it's only made in Guerrero, Mexico. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ted N has a question here. Uh, Red, did Frank Schweiss reveal how they were able to get into Marilyn Monroe's house and not be, and not to be graphic, but also how they were to put the poison without yeah. leaving any physical marks uh, in her? Yeah. Uh, he said they hung around and they waited, just like any hitman. They, they waited. But um, uh, as, as they entered, uh, it wasn't through that broken window that was found. That broken window was found later. So um, I assume, I'm just guessing, he described the situation to me in kind of in detail. They were posing as tile setters. So they were out there doing their work as tile setters. She had bought the tile in uh, uh, Mexico. And uh, I think it was after Bobby Kennedy and that crew left. There was a lot of traffic there that day. <laughs> Poison suppositories ride the wind. Ron Frey said they were gentle. <laughs> That's how they did it. They were gentle. It makes sense. What the hell? Uh, it was wait. chloral hydrate. It was chloral hydrate. Wait, James Marvin. Wait, Frank admitted to Red that they whacked Monroe? What? Yes. I did a bedtime story about it five years ago. Goodbye, Norma Jean. <laughs> I promise I'll never sing again. All right. I promise. Ron <laughs> Frey, Charles Nicoletti. He was uh, there too, right? Where? <laughs> Up by Monroe? Yes. No. no. no? Nothing no. to do with it. No. She was sedated. They were gentle. Charles Nicoletti. That's what Ron Frey said. Uh, uh, Ch Chucky Nicoletti was part of that crew. The Grand Avenue crew, but uh, no, he was not involved in that. Okay, Carl Foster, that's just rum, whiskey, and Gatorade. Oh my God, who would hey. do that? <laughs> Joe, Joe Colada, how's it going? Joe, how you doing, Joe? If you just tuned in, buddy, three days ago, this channel hit 30,000. 30, Thousand subscribers. It has gone up nine thousand subscribers in the last year now, which is unbelievable. I said I never thought that that could happen, that it would do that, but it has actually grown more. And um, you everybody's got more show guy. You got everybody, show. everybody, everybody's saying hi, Joe, Ted, N, Jason, uh, Kling, Klingner. Uh, the Duke of Dunhurst, you're getting a lot of love out there, Show Everybody's saying hi. David Grimpy, uh, Brew City 2, everybody. Fr uh, Joe Collada is in the house right now. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for saying hello. Everybody always loves that, Joe, when you do. And I, I hope, hope you're doing well, Joe. Hope you're feeling well. Hope you're doing well. Um, <laughs> everybody, Keith Helton, Calzone. 83, Lewis Cole. Um, wow. Everybody saying hi. Hi, Joe. Joe Clark, Jim Magnifici, all of them. That's all for you. And uh, Carl Foster, everybody. Uh, Ron Frey, quick comment. The plan was to pin a kinky murder on the Kennedys, I thought. That's what the plan was. A kinky murder? I mean, it's there was to, they were trying to plan that it was the Kennedys that did this. No, I mean, they were trying to plan an overdose. They tried okay. to make it look like an overdose, but uh, the Kennedys were involved in it. Uh, James Marvin, hey, I'm watching cr a crime story on Amazon. It's obviously about Spilatro, but anyone know who the fictional Chicago bosses Bartoli and Franchitti Fran Franchitti were supposed to be? No, I don't. The fictional bosses were supposed to be? Don't, no idea. I just, I started to watch Crime Story with, you know, that Del Shannon runaway theme song. It's really great. Um, I just, I looked at how, how many episodes and I went, my God, this is going to take me, you know what I mean? This is going to take me a year to get through this. I just, wait till I have more time. Isn't it for your Del Shannon of the 60s? <laughs> Right. I remember that. Wow. 
That was AM radio. <laughs> um, correction, Brad. Charles Nicoletti and Chucky English was in the Taylor Street West Side crew with Sam G and Con in the 42 game. Yes, at that time, but later on, I told you those groups kind of merged or whatever with Joey Lombardo. Mm -hmm. So back in the old days, it kind of merged, it merged over. Okay. Just like the Calabrises, they were with Lombardo. Pablo, 2012, Michael Franchise. Michael Franchise. Ah, uh, I see what you did there with that little piece of cheese at the end. Yeah, I see what you're doing there, Pablo. It's clever, very clever. <laughs> Lewis Cole, Johnny, no knows DeFranzo was low key. I know he was muscle for Milwaukee Phil, but how respected was he? I think he was respected quite well. I mean, he was involved in uh, in the murder of Tony and Mike. He was up there that day at the house, but uh, somehow he avoided uh, going through the trial. So, I don't know. He was an informant, so I don't know what to tell you about him. Respected? I think feared. He was feared more than respected. He had um, a few hitters around him. William Kirchmayer. Well, you see, I got the Polish name right there, William. Adam, thought you were going to bone up on your Italian name pronunciation. I have been boning up on it. Go ask Don, to, Don Ciccio di Porzalo, all right? He'll vouch for me. American Gangster Franchise. You guys, Franchise Pizza. My gosh, what the hell? What's going on with this? That uh, All of a sudden, the cheese thing with this guy. I mean, the guy's got something against the guy. I don't know. Um <laughs> Do you have an example of what the outfit did? Uh, hold on. Wayne Connors. Do you have an example of when the outfit did something by good for someone, you know, helped a good person? As individuals, not as collectively, but individuals like Joey always helped people in his neighborhood. Uh, there were a lot of people that did, but uh, as individuals, not as the outfit itself, not as a group. Sandra Luciano, nothing but love for Illinois Paisans. Welcome, Sandra. Um, thanks for stopping by and uh, listening in today. Nice to have you with us. <clears throat> okay, Calzone ADC said DeFranzo was under Jack Cerrone. Ed, yeah, he was. But Cerrone went to jail. He went to prison. So... That was on the skim. Aha. Uh -huh. So he was in succession. He was next in line. DeFranzio was. So, so Grievous, Kirch is German. Okay. Kirch might be German. But according to Google, Kirchmeier is Polish. Ah. Ancestry. It's Polish. So there you go. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you, but um, yeah. Okay. Back to some more questions from you guys. I don't want to get too, uh, too far behind in the, <clears throat> in the comments. Um, and they also were running out of time here, but um, is it true that Gianni Russo gave Al Capone syphilis? Gianni, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. Just learn this. And Wayne, I want you to listen up. Everybody listen up to this. Las Vegas has a few titles. We're the entertainment capital. We're the wedding destination. Divorce destination. <laughs> we are the suicide. More suicides per capita. We have more churches in, in places of worship per capita in Sin City than anywhere else in the country. But most importantly... We have more cases of syphilis per capita than anywhere else. <laughs> Figure that out. I didn't know that either. 
More cases of syphilis. You want me to take it further? I'm going to take a little bit further. Most of the cases of syphilis are male to male contact. Really? That's no that's no lie. That's coming from a that's coming from a, a doctor here in town who knows the numbers. So it's a strange fact, but it's fact. Anyway, so Sandra Luciano from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Well, welcome, Sandra. It's good to have she you. Pops in all the time. Sandra, you're a great gal. Uh, I heard Gianni Russo gave himself a humdinger. Could have happened. I, you know, depends on what a humdinger is. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because. Yeah, Grievous, he could pull off a decent stand-up routine. Could, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, Gianni, they're talking about. So, yeah. <laughs> Gianni did what? Lewis Cole's one. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I swore a couple of months ago we weren't going to do that anymore. But, um, yeah. Joe Collada. My brother used to call guys like Johnny DeFranzo dry snitches because nobody knew they were beefing. That's right. He was. Dry snitches. Joe, you're exactly on. You hit it on the head. Never, never heard that. I, I've never heard that, Joe. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Keith Helton, don't hang around porno shops. <laughs> Pat Marcy was basically the last capo of the Taylor Street crew and ran the first ward along with Fred Rotto. Rody. Ro Ro Rody who uh, also was a top capo, Robert Williams says. Dazzling Urbanite, thank you very much for the super sticker. That's really nice of you, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> hope that you guys are enjoying yourselves and uh, listening in. I, I, I'm really, again, uh, it's, it's just really nice. That, uh, that you guys tune in and listen to this and listen to us rap for a while each week about, about Chicago. I mean, we figured it out. I did not know at first. I went, what what are we going to do with this? How, what, how, how do we keep something? How do we keep it going, in other words? And um, hit the like button, guys. Smash it. Number one, that's how we keep it going. You smash the like button. Okay, that's the first thing. And also no. hit the notification bell for the next time. Hit the notification bell for the exactly click hit that make sure that way you you know when we start up if you've forgotten that it's Wednesday it'll let you know on your phone hey you you you, you know if you want to watch live because you guys like that's the thing about this channel it's the interaction I'm I've talked to so many of you now that uh it's the it's the uh inner it's the inner uh you know communication that you guys have so Anyway, knowing that, Adam, Gianni must have caught it. Frank Ferraro. <laughs> oh, back to that. <laughs> so. Gianni seems to be the butt of every joke lately. <laughs> the, you know, I, well, I, you know I'm, I'm never, I'm, I'll never play it. I'll never play what he said. I have it. I could play it, but I'll never play it because I'm not going to give him the FaceTime. But what yes. he said about Frank uh, when Frank passed is absolutely, in my opinion, unforgivable. So. Totally. So it, it was completely out of line. No normal, decent human being would do something or say something like that. So in my opinion, he's not a normal, decent human being. So there you go. Ride the wind. Good job on the channel, Adam. Thank you very much. So like I was saying, we had no idea. No idea. Um, chain, oh, chain Weaver. Good point. YouTube takes 40% of the super chat. Use PayPal or Cash App. Yeah, you know. That is true. They do take a big chunk. And uh, I don't think it's 40. I think it's 30. But uh, still, yeah, it is. I guess I should set one of those up sometime. And uh, that way, because that's just kind of. PayPal is, PayPal is more reasonable. Yeah, PayPal or Venmo or whatever. So um, you're bucking the saying, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> um, that, that, this is YouTube. That's a shoot too. <laughs> that's, that's that's bucking the system, all right. And uh, um, let me see. Uh, it, 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 Nevada is the number one state for syphilis. Come home with a souvenir that keeps on giving. 
<laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, that's good. That's funny. Russo's teeth are too white. That's because they're not his teeth. That's because they're either um, veneers or... They might be implants. Implants. could Yeah, could be. But possibly veneers, I would think. Anyways, they really don't care. So <laughs> it went up to 40% chain weaver. Don't tell me that. It did go up to 40%. That's unbelievable. I can't believe it. So, yeah, we'll have to set one of those up. That's just why, why make them richer so next week guys we're going to be meeting here once again at 2 p.m like we do every redness day uh as soon as this uh, maybe look for a video tomorrow i have another short uh flashback that's going to go up tomorrow if you did not see the pesci video i'll put it in the description and watch Lewis it folks watch it folks it's good uh it's it's good if you guys didn't see it uh, if you guys didn't see it, then, um, yeah, then it'll be up there. SG, thank you. I appreciate that. All $6, because I guess YouTube just took four of that. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, no. Hey, Spiro, 30% is more than the outfit charges. You're right. You're right. It is. It's crazy. It's not right. Kevin Rose, we want more, more uh, tapes with narratives, with the subtitles. We'll do that. David Grimpy, how's Lewis doing? I haven't talked to him in a minute, uh, in probably a week, maybe 10 days. I have to give him a call and see how he's doing. Uh, Ted N, great show. Adam, great crowd, good questions. Yeah, you guys, I, it's Red and I sometimes sit and go, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? We've got a specific subject or something. These are the days that I like where we just, just freestyle it and let you guys decide what the Heck, we're going to talk about. Let the audience decide. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Anyway, Sandra Luciano, glad you love the channel. Glad you're a new uh, uh, prescriber and uh, stick around. Be sure to check out the playlists on the channel. If you're just getting here, go watch the, there's playlists of, I think we're up to, uh, what are we at? We're just something like we, we, we just passed 160 videos or something up there. So anyway. Um, yeah. Smoke any good cigars lately, uh, Adam? Yes, I uh, sure have. So a couple. Anyway, thanks for the show again. Best channel for Chicago mob facts. You and Red are great. Thank you very much, Lewis. Appreciate you. And, uh, um, Joe, you're still listening. God bless. Talk to you soon. Hope you're feeling well. You people. Hit that like Sandra. You're new. Hit that like button. button. Smash the like button. Hit the like you button. Watch more, hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. Oh, and be sure, guys, check out, be sure to check out um, mobmento.com. Mobmento. Okay. Uh, M O B M E N T O. Mobmento. Like, mementos but they're mob mentos mafia memorabilia go check out mob mento and uh there's all kinds of things that are uh available there uh including the uh upper crust little pizza box and uh there's some framed items some really cool stuff there so thanks again guys for watching red uh it's been awesome once again and thanks for coming on See you, folks. <laughs> See you guys later. It's been fun. And that's a wrap. Mob vlog.